Yo, what's up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, back at you with some more daily NBA news and updates. Got a few things to talk about today, so let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. Lego. First things first, a little bit of an update on the whole Gordon Hayward situation. Now, I know when most of us saw the injury take place on Tuesday night, we knew right then that it was most likely going to cause Gordon Hayward to miss most, if not all, of the NBA regular season. The official diagnosis was like an ankle sprain and also a fracture in his ankle, and it will require surgery to fix. But like I said, we did get even more of an update last night. Now, I don't want to give any Boston Celtics fans out there any type of false hope, but I do got to say that there is a small chance that he can come back and play at some point this season. So here's what's being said about Gordon Hayward's injury so far. It's difficult to speculate given there's still so many unknowns, but I think it's likely going to be 12 weeks at least based on what we have right now. He will probably be reevaluated at that mark. There's an outside chance he's able to play again this season. But again, the only other example I have on my database the injury occurred in November and the player missed the final 68 games recovering he's going to be up against it so I guess whoever is working with Gordon Hayward has seen an injury and worked with a player who had injury exactly like this in the past that player went down in November and they missed the last 68 games like he said and he also said the base recovery time for an injury like this is around 12 weeks which sounds like great news that's only three months but that's only the base recovery time of everything goes well that's how fast he could be recovered after surgery after that though he still has to do rehab and other conditioning before he is ready to play his first game and that could take probably another six to eight weeks after he's recovered so in total we're looking at around 20 weeks of recovery and rehab time which is five months so five months from now puts us at like the April March time of year basketball of course is still going on during that time which means it is possible for Gordon Hayward to come back and play a little bit this season most likely though that is if the Celtics make the playoffs and make a deep playoff push all this being said though I still wouldn't place any money on seeing Gordon Hayward come back this year it's just not worth risking a player coming back too early just to have them get hurt again because they came back too early this has got to stop now because this is getting absolutely ridiculous two days two players two season ending injury I briefly talked about this in the other video however at the time of the recording there wasn't any official news on what the injury was or how much time you will miss but now it is official jeremy lynn is out for the season due to a ruptured patellar tendon in his right knee jeremy worked tremendously hard during the offseason and in training camp and was excited for the prospects of the team this season we feel awful that the injury will cost him this season however our entire organization will be there to support jeremy in every way possible throughout his recovery jeremy remains an important part of this team and will continue to contribute in the leadership role that is what general manager of the brooklyn nets sean Marks had to say about Jeremy Lin getting injured and he is 100% right this is terrible to see just like Gordon Hayward prayers up for Jeremy Lin seeing a player go down like this in the first game of the season Jeremy Lin this offseason was talking a lot about how he believed the Brooklyn Nets couldn't make the playoff he was working hard to get there putting work in on his game and then to go down with a season ending injury like this it it's terrible. If you haven't seen it already, here's the video of Jeremy Lin just knowing that something was wrong. And it just went down and immediately knew something was wrong. Did not accept help from his teammates. And then the instant reaction from Lin as he looked towards the net. It's crazy. As soon as he went down, the other guys went to go offer him help. He was like, you know what? No, I'm done. I'm done. He looked over the coach and said, I'm done and then broke down. That was, that was tough to watch. We need something to lighten the mood up a bit. All this talk about season ending injuries, it's getting kind of depressing. Depressing. Chandler Parsons. If you're a Memphis Grizzlies fan, hearing that name probably sent you into a bit of a depression as well. Chandler Parsons is coming off the bench this year for the Memphis Grizzlies. Who cares? Why is this news you might be asking? Well, that in of itself is not news, but let me just remind you that he did get a $94 million contract from the Memphis Grizzlies. $94 million coming off the bench. Now you understand how that's depressing. He scored a total of 210 points for the Grizzlies last year. He is making $19 million a year. 19 million divided by 210 points. That comes out to around $90,476.19 per bucket score, per point score. That is extremely, 
depressing. And the fans let him know how much they dislike him yesterday. Yo, Chandler Parsons was booed during a Memphis Grizzlies home game, their home opener, first game of the year. The man was booed. I have never seen anything like this. I have seen Knicks fans boo the Knicks, but I mean, that's nothing out of the ordinary. It's the Knicks, stuff like that happens at the Garden all the time. But to see the Memphis Grizzlies fans boo one of their players, not even the team, a single player, while he's shooting free throws, that's terrible. From the, in the paint to start this game, Chandler Parsons at the line for a pair as we send it over to Rob. The thing David Fisdale doesn't like early here is that New Orleans bringing the physical game to the Grizzlies. He said, we've got to bring the physical game to them. He did say he likes the ball movement on the offensive end, but right now we just got to pick it up on the other end. Well, in the pinnacle effective advice to the game, Brevin, you talked about physicality. Grizzlies have not been as physical, and Chandler Parsons misses two free throws. And Part of me thinks he missed the second free throw on purpose just so we could check if they were actually booing him. Then he heard it again. He was like, yep, they were booing me. But then again, another part of me thinks he just naturally missed the second free throw because he's Chandler Parsons. And as you can expect, after the game, he wasn't too happy that the home crowd was booing him. It's tasteless. I'll treat home games like real games if that's the way it's going to be. I think it's okay for Memphis Grizzlies fan to be upset with Charlton Parsons and disappointed in Charlton Parsons. He did fleece their favorite team out of nearly a hundred million dollars. I will be very upset too. But I also want to say that I think maybe booing him while he's shooting free throws might be taking it a little bit too far. That might be too disrespectful no matter how poorly the man has played for you guys. Russell Westbrook is going to the Los Angeles Lakers. Signs a contract with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Paul George is going to the Los Angeles Lakers. He starts talking about how much he loves playing for the Thunder so far. LeBron James is going to the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's like beating a dead horse at this point. I could once again give you guys the same old cliche about how everyone is supposed to go to the Lakers but doesn't but I'm gonna spare you guys that this time. I'm just gonna get right into what it is that the Lakers are trying to do now in order to woo in some free agents next summer. The new strategy which is the little thing. Obviously we want to win. Everybody wants to win but to me when you focus on the little things like that and creating who you are the winning will take care of itself when it's time for that to happen. A lot of ball movement, a fast game. What else do free agents want? They want to see if a team can compete, which is what I want to see too. That's what Luke Walton said. All I want us to do is have a good season where free agents look and say, oh man, I can see myself in that lineup and with that team and we can step it up to another level. That's what Magic Johnson said. And this honestly isn't a bad approach in previous years when the lakers were recruiting free agents their whole pitch was we're la pack your bags and come play for la that's it and of course it didn't work out too well because no one was going to the los angeles lakers players started to learn that it doesn't matter too much what city you play in you're traveling all the time anyways you never really get to be there only during home games then during the summer they can just live wherever they want so it really doesn't matter where they play. What determines where they want to play is the team that's going to give them the best chance to win or the team that's going to give them the best chance to be the best player they can be. In previous years, the Lakers haven't been able to offer either of those things to any free agent. Now, from at least what Luke Walton is saying, it sounds like they finally figured out that, hey, you know what? Winning games, having a winning environment in a place, teammates, stuff like that, that people actually want to play with, that might actually matter so it's good that they know what they have to do now now it just comes down to whether or not they can do it and a lot of that comes down to lonzo ball in order for this whole thing to work it all rides on lonzo he has to be the guy to prove to everyone that he is the player that everyone says he can be that lavar ball says he can be because if he doesn't if the lakers look like they looked last year where they're just losing games there is no real identity to the team no one knows what direction they're headed then no one's going to want to come play for la but if he does and he shows you know what if we get the right pieces around this guy we can be something special players are going to want to come play for la i can guarantee you that it might not be lebron or maybe not even paul george but they will get some players to go play for LA. Question of the daytime. Who do you guys think is going to go to the Los Angeles Lakers next summer? Let me know down in the comment section below, but now let's take a look at what you guys said in yesterday's video. Yesterday, I asked you guys what you think about the one and done rule and what changes you will make to it, and here is what you said. Question of the day. The one and done rule should be gone.
Because imagine being a great player and your family has always been in poverty. Then you go to college and you get a career ending injury. Boom, your kid's stuck in poverty. Question of the day, they must change this one and done rule. If a high school prospect like the legendary Kwame Brown thinks he has what it takes to play with the big boys, then let the young blood be. Most of you guys were just saying, let them do whatever they wanna do. If they wanna go play for college, let them play for college. If they wanna come straight out of high school, let them play out of high school. The only thing is if they're forcing the players to play college basketball, then the least you could do is pay them. The college are making all this money off them, why not give them a slice? Not like an NBA salary, but just a little something at least. Adam Silver did say change is coming though, so I guess we just gotta wait and see what that change is. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Let me know what you think about all of this down in the comment section below. Don't forget to go check out the highlights video that I made earlier today, but other than that, thank you once again for watching the video. Hope you guys did enjoy it, and I guess until tomorrow, keep getting the buckets, Team STC, and I'm out of here. Peace!